Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, and the fallout of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series has been incredible to watch, especially from a perspective of someone who has no intentions of watching this show. Obi-Wan Kenobi was always one of my favorite characters, and I don't want to see him destroyed like Disney has done to so many other classic and legacy Star Wars characters. I just can't bring myself to torture myself like that. I'm not that masochistic, and uh, I feel bad for the people who had to check this out and the ones who had to endure this, because from the clips I've seen, it's just incredibly stupidly made. Just gonna say that. Yeah, the fight sequences, they made <laughs> Rise of Skywalker fight sequences look good by comparison, and I didn't think that was ever gonna be possible. You know, the baseball bat swinging, hitting lightsabers, and that was it. I didn't think it was going to get much worse than that. And then the other stupidity of Darth Vader, he extinguishes some fire, all badass and shit. And then someone else besides him starts the fire in front of him. And he's suddenly like, oh no, what do I do with the fire? It's so scary. It's like a whole 15 seconds ago, we saw you go like this and extinguish the flames. You can do that again. Or just like you did 30 seconds ago, you reach out and you grab Obi-Wan on the other side of the flame with the force and pull him towards you. The flame is not an issue. Or you could even jump on it. Or it's not that big around. You could walk around it. But this is a, oh, no fire, I didn't start. What do I do? And then Obi-Wan with his laser gate thing, he's got to shoot it to open it. When there's a space next to it that could fit 20 people abreast to walk around. Why would he need to open the laser gate? Just walk the two feet to the right to that big old gap and go through. The only reason you need to shoot the laser gate open is if you're gonna take the truck. But if you're not taking the goddamn truck, what is the fucking point? I've seen a lot of these clips and they are painful just from a clip perspective. Uh, and especially Obi-Wan just saying, fuck this shit, I'm out right before fighting Vader and running away all like, I'm the Yu-Gi-Oh man. It's character assassination of the highest order. And a lot of people are focusing on Ray, uh, Reva. Reva? I don't know how to. Uh, she does not seem like the worst thing with this show. But far from it. She's just a bad part of it. Not necessarily the worst part of it. What they're doing to Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader is far, far worse. And I, I'm so glad I'm not checking it out. And my recent Reva video actually got a lot of backlash on Instagram of all places. I barely use that platform. I just post my thumbnails there. But apparently people there really like Reva and it was kind of funny and they all had some wild claims like how Finn being shrunk on the poster for China, Disney had no say in that whatsoever. I mean, no, they made the poster. They don't just send the individual character files or whatever and say, do whatever you want. There were additional things on that poster that weren't on the other one to cover him up and it was moved around. Disney had to have done that themselves. That's insane to me that someone could believe that. And with the whole situation with Reva, apparently they really like her over there. And it was just a weird situation. And they all kept saying, you're wrong. It's the most watched show in Disney Plus history. Well, that might be the case. That might be true. Most watched, I can believe it. They haven't shown us the numbers, but I can believe it. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi. But the funny thing is, it's not the most loved Disney Plus show. It might be the most watched premiere, and there might be some chicanery with the two episodes at once, but regardless, let's say it is the most watched. It's not the most loved, as we can see from multiple places. And Instagram also said you can't take things like the user scores into account. They're all just bots. They're all just people review bombing and people who've never seen the show. And you can pretty easily tell the difference. And you shouldn't take one like Rotten Tomatoes score as fact. Shouldn't do that. There's a lot of chicanery that goes on, especially with critics, users. But if you do your research, go into it, read the individual, get an idea of what is going on, compare and across to other platforms like IMDb and Metacritic, you can get a sense. So Rotten Tomatoes is a piece of the puzzle. Can't be a full picture of the fandom in and of itself but we have this article here from bounding comments that just puts the images together real and nice, nice and neat for me but the obi-wan kenobi series is incredibly low rated from the fans even the critics are lower than normal still good i mean critics aren't going to say anything bad about disney but i think this is incredibly funny to see 87 percent from the critics not bad normally, but 59% from the fans. And that score hasn't moved in a while. Normally they fluctuate a little bit. But like I was saying, you don't 100% trust it. So you open it up, read a few of the reviews. Phenomenal. I never expected to see Vader again in my entire life. That definitely seems like a bot. At least he has a picture. 
Uh, I can believe this. It, it seems uh, a little retarded just because we knew we were going to see Vader again. I mean, he was in Rogue One. But yeah, um, I'll believe it. Uh, when they don't have pictures, you kind of start to worry a little bit. But that is a fully fledged out remark with some lore references. Okay, so real. Not even worth the half star. Disney killed the OT Star Wars. Uh, a bot wouldn't have a picture. Wouldn't say OT. It would it would say something very different. Like you can you can tell when things are bots or not. That's definitely not a bot. Yeah, it, it's usually pretty easy to tell. Uh, yeah, I've never seen it fuck up like that before. That's interesting. And Moses, yeah, that. I take these all as true, but it's kind of funny how it says they've got critic reviews, but you can't actually see any critic reviews. So that 87% is a little bit in question here. But yeah, no, you can just go in there and kind of get a sense, read the actual reviews, and you'll get an idea. And there's a lot of negative, more positive than last time I was on here. So that's that's an interesting change. The Force is pathetically weak in this one. Yeah, they keep shutting off their main characters from the Force. I think that's really weird. And yeah, bots don't use emojis. And yeah, even on Metacritic, it's equally 4.6 out of 10. That's not good. That's really not good. And it's unusual for a Star Wars property to be like this. And the proof more than anything else is Google Trends. And I have to shout out DJ Cobra from Geeks and Gamers for bringing this idea to my attention. But for the Google Trends, Kenobi was the third most popular entertainment franchise on the week of its release. The third. This is a major Star Wars show. It should destroy everything else being the stratosphere. By comparison, nothing should even touch this. But look at that. It's so much lower than the other two. Top Gun Maverick, significantly higher. And then if you look at Stranger Things, fucking hell, on the day. Do you see? A 100 to 32. That is an insane difference. More people were checking out Stranger Things, which honestly had a few rough last few seasons, than Kenobi. Because there have been a history with Disney Star Wars, because there's been a history of racism, there's been a history of gaslighting. I know a lot of my personal fans and personal friends who didn't see the show because of the whole gaslighting situation. Because they knew it was a lie, just like Disney had lied about Kelly Muir Tran, just like they lied about John Boyega. And both Kelly Muir Tran and John Boyega said it wasn't the fans that drove us to these extremes. It was Disney or Axis Media, the reporters. It wasn't the fans. Disney's been caught in hypocrisy so many times that even the normies are starting to realize it. Apparently Instagram isn't where those normies are because <laughs> God damn it. They did not like my Rava thumbnail. None of them bothered to watch the video, of course, but they didn't like my thumbnail. It was just really weird, really weird. But yeah, that is an insane difference. That is more than the proof we need that it is not the heights that it was. Disney firmly made Star Wars from a billion dollar franchise to a million dollar franchise. Just look at the box office from the sequels. They lost more than half, half. And then if you count in all the movies, it's more than that. I'd say from an estimation, not a math expert or anything like that, they probably got a third of the profits that they should have gotten from the sequels. I'd say that's fair. Maybe, maybe a little bit higher just because you can take the first one as a template for what they should do. Last Jedi, significantly less. And Rise of Skywalker, less than half of what they should have gotten what they get in Force Awakens. It's insane. Star Wars is dying from a normal perspective. And that is an insane thing to think about. And this is proof along with this, this, and then we actually have bad comments putting all the stuff next to each other. And it's just very interesting to see. 42%, that's not good. And The Last Jedi is the most controversial. Whether or not you like it, well, that changed while I was recording this. Nice. But that's not good. That's really, really not good. The Mandalorian was an insanely good ratio. So compared to that, it's not even as good as the Mandalorian. And even the Book of Boba Fett, Disney is on a downward trajectory. And at the time that they made this article, Obi-Wan Kenobi was at a 3.7. So 
Uh, their numbers are increasing. They're still not good, though, and I wonder if there's anything going on with that. We know from the Captain Marvel situation that there's some chicane growing on. And, yeah, when they made this article, it was at 56%, so it's gone up a little bit, which is weird because there hasn't been an article recently. But you can see from these numbers, the Mandalorian significantly higher on Metacritic, the Book of Boba Fett significantly higher on Metacritic, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, IMDb reviews, a lot higher than the other platforms, but still not good. Some very interesting data. Even with a character or characters as powerful as Kenobi and Darth Vader, Star Wars is in a downward trajectory and it's continuing on. And I hate to see it. But at this point, I'm very apathetic when it comes to Star Wars because of how much bad content we've gotten the last few years. So I'm more sitting back and enjoying it. That's why I'm not watching. Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm apathetic more than anything else, and I can't take any more pain, honestly. So I'm just going to sit back, watch Disney burn, metaphorically, of course, and watch the normies catch up to what we've been saying here on this platform for years. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Anon. <laughs>